You would think that moving and packing all of my stuff up means that I'm not buying more stuff, but I still need to stop and like have real conversations with myself, especially right now as new release season for so many planner companies is kicking into high gear. Hi everybody, one of the things I like to talk about on this channel is consumerism, especially how it relates to the planner, bullet journal, stationery, paper crafting world that I and probably many of you tend to dip our toes in from time to time or our whole bodies. It could be like a full blown skinny dip in the stationary world. You can't talk about consumerism in planner world without talking about new release season. There are new releases all the time. There are some companies <coughs> that release almost constantly. However, there are two big seasons that tend to bring like a metric ass ton of new planner products every year. One is in the fall when they're releasing for the January through December calendar year. And one is right about now in the spring when they're releasing for the academic year, usually June through July or July through June or August through July. Those, those types of situations. We're entering into that right now. We're already starting to see a lot of that as when I'm filming this, I am beginning to see sneak peeks of all sorts of different things on social media. The influencers who are associated with each company are really starting to like pimp out some shit. It's, it's, it's coming and I thought it would be a great time to do an anti-haul to let you know what I will not be buying this planner release season, spring of 2021. Before I get started, I want to remind you that these are things I am not buying. If you are buying any of these things, no judgment to you. You need to make your own choices with your own money and your own lifestyle. And I am just some rando on the internet who's telling you what I'm not gonna buy and why. My goal here is not to make you decide that you're not gonna buy any of these things either. My goal is just to remind you and to model for you the process of really thinking about how you spend your money rather than just letting the marketing and the influencers and the limited edition and the new release and the got to get it while the getting's good while all that's happening I'm trying to remind you to stop and step away from all of that and really decide if it's something that you need I would love to make a video on how to resist buying planners when you're relatively happy in your planner, how to not let new planners make your planner seem like boring to you. Does that even make sense? I don't know, but if you like the idea of what I'm talking about, let me know in the comments below and I will make sure to add that video to my list for when I start making my next round of videos. Anyway, let's get into it. I've rambled long enough. I really need to bring up this first one because as I'm filming this, the release is in the middle of happening right now and they released all the covers and everything is so beautiful. And I actually had to stop for a second and remind myself that A, I really like my bullet journal, B, I have no room for anything else, and C, I really hate daily planning. And that is the Simplified Planner release. Their new covers are stunning. Stunning. I especially like the uh, gingham one. It's like navy gingham or something. It's or Carolina gingham. They have some fucking names or whatever, but it's like a light blue gingham situation. It's so pretty. Navy, I think, is the hydrangeas, which is the other one that I really like. They kind of stuck with their brand, but sort of amped up some of the color this year, and I really like it, especially since they had something like the hydrangeas. Like, I'm not about the pineapple life, and they pineappled the shit out of their planners before, so... That was easy to resist, but these hydrangeas are gorgeous and the gingham is gorgeous and I don't like daily planning. I mean, I write myself a daily to-do list, but a whole page in a daily planner is wasted on me. I have tried. I have tried in the simplified planner. I have tried in the day designer. I have tried and it's just, it's not what I like. It's not what I like. With a bullet journal, I can do a full page if I need to. Guess what? I've been bullet journal only since November, I think, and I have not done one single daily page, so. I don't daily page. On top of that, it's the wire O binding. That shit sucks. Uh -huh. Let's just be real. The wire O binding is hot garbo. I have no need to buy a planner that I won't use with a binding that I absolutely hate just because the cover is pretty. And speaking of pretty covers, at the time of this filming, they have not fully released information yet, but they have shown sneak peeks. And that is the Erin Condren Life Planner launch. There are three, I think, in this new launch. There's something I don't care about, like a mid-century circles redux or something and there's one that's quotes but it's supposed to be hella neutral which would make my heart happy except for the fact that fucking quotes like 
I think quilts and planners are cheese ball at best unless it's the Adam J. Kurtz planner but there's a flora planner with a different flower every month it's really pretty the sneak peeks I've seen are absolutely gorgeous it is right up my alley in terms of the mutedness of the colors and in terms of the aesthetic of the flowers now I have no idea if they only have it in colorful or if they offer it in neutral as well if they only had it in colorful then it would be a non-starter for me anyway because I don't dig colorful planners but if they had it in neutral I would likely be totally down to try it except for the fact that a again I'm happy with my bullet journal only lifestyle B if I am going to go to a new planner that review already came out and I'll link it up above and C I'm still not comfortable buying from Erin Condren I understand that the company has made some strides in trying to support black artists and trying to listen to their community and respond to some of the stuff that happened last year it's not that I think that they need to do more that's not my place to decide for them to do more cute covers or not there are a lot of companies that I could be spending my money with if I were to buy that planner I would have to twist myself into a pretzel to come to terms with my reasoning for buying it and I'm just not about that life right now if you're still shopping with them totally like I said it's not for me to judge you but I'm just letting you know don't ask me if I'm buying it because I'm not gonna like I don't I, I don't need it and I don't want it all right number three is not necessarily super specific but it is everywhere and I mean everywhere and that is sticker books there are sticker books from the happy planner fucking making it making it rain sticker books there are sticker books all of my my good friends who have stickers currently in Michael's Chrissy and Designs, sweet kawaii design all of them they all are getting like there's a whole bunch of them that have sticker books out at Michael's a I haven't seen them at my Michael's so that might be helping me with be buying them but B I'm not really using stickers in my bullet journal right now I might buy them for support except I have nowhere to put anything right now so I'm not buying them for support either at the moment that might change when I move but in general I actually do not like the sticker book situation I don't like the concept of sticker books I actually really dislike the concept of sticker books and I will tell you why this is my opinion don't come at me if you're a hoe for the books but let's just go with this for a second number one they are hard to organize. You have to have legitimate pieces of furniture to organize that shit, it feels like. I've seen people use stickers to put on the edge of their sticker books to tell you which sticker books are in their sticker book organization. They've used little like tags or divider. It's just, it's too much fucking work. I have a box of them packed up out there, not a whole box, but like a Tupperware size box within a larger packing box that I'm hanging on to mainly for hot mess plan with me's once I move but honestly organizing them sucks my asshole so that's one thing like at least with sheets of stickers you can put them in a binder or put them in a folder or something but with the sticker books it's like you need to have an entire Ikea organization or go to the container stores closet whatever people and spend $85,000 to organize your fucking sticker books number two and I already mentioned this I'm not really using stickers in my planning right now I'm doing the bullet journal only thing and it's really Really simplified my planning lifestyle now there are some times when I will use stickers maybe for the fun of it during a live plan with me or something but in general right now stickers are kind of put to the wayside when I move and I get settled in especially if I bring another planner into my rotation yeah the stickers will likely come back because I love the shit out of using stickers but right now I'm not using them so buying more it it's an exercise in what the fuck Cindy my third reason for not liking sticker books my style of planning tends towards using the same things in different colors when I do plan with stickers I tend to like to color coordinate and I tend to use the same things over and over again little laptop stickers little music stickers little email stickers little fucking kidney stickers you know I tend to use them over and over again the problem for me with sticker books is that you get like seven of something at the most and then you're out of it and then you have this entire sticker book and the stickers that you used are gone and now you have all these other things you have to figure out how to use now I know some people get totally down with like using all of the stickers to make like fancy layouts and shit I'm just not that person so for my personal planning style sticker books are a giant waste of money and paper and finally and this is going to be a real hot take especially for those of you who love sticker books but this is going to be a hot take there are many symbols in the planner community especially within different subgroups of the planner community that tend to be a status symbol right especially because there are so many youtubers who receive so much stuff for free or so much stuff 
as PR people or design team people or squad people or because they just like to buy a lot of stuff. But when you watch YouTube and you see people with like entire walls behind them of sticker books and planners, but I'm referring to sticker books at the moment here, my hot take is that having a massive sticker book collection is a status symbol in the planner community. And again, I'm not about that life. Now, if you have a lot of them and you have them because you love them, I am not judging you. But what I am saying is that there are people, and I know this because I've seen them say it in Facebook groups, who feel inadequate because their sticker book collection is not as big as somebody that they saw online. So then they want more sticker books or they buy multiples of sticker books so that they can show off their sticker collection, their haul, their sticker collection, and then the next people see it and then the cycle repeats itself. And it's the best people that it's for are for the companies who are selling you the sticker books because they're like, hell yeah, it doesn't even matter if they use them as long as they collect them. It just feels a little icky to me and I, I'm not about it. You could say the same thing for my pen collection and I would say, yes, I'm a hypocrite. <laughs> enough with the sticker books. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is not necessarily something specific. I haven't seen the accessories that are coming out from different companies this year, but one of the things I have been seeing a lot of from other people that I follow on Instagram and YouTube, planner, influencer people, people who I enjoy, people who I watch, and there's always this latest bag or this latest pouch. This is my tote that I bring my shit around my house with. This is my bag that holds my pens. Oh, look at my new bag with all my pens. Bags, pouches, totes. I ain't buying any of that shit right now. And this has nothing to do with influencers and this has nothing to do with companies. This has everything to do with the fact that I am a bit of a hoarder when it comes to containers and bags and pouches and totes are containers. They're soft containers, but they are containers nonetheless. I just packed up a whole bunch of my bedroom and my office. I am not even going to begin to tell you how many pouches and totes and bags I packed up to take with me to Denver. And I was decluttering. And I will also not begin to tell you how few of them I was able to let myself part with. It was that bad. If you thought that the books were gonna be the thing I was gonna have trouble decluttering, uh-uh. It was the bags and the pouches and the totes. So I am having to tell myself in this video, I'm going to have to remind myself from this video, rewatch it, put it on my phone, put it on my fucking desktop, my computer. Cindy, you do not need any more because you have eight million of them. So yeah, I'm not buying any more of those. And I'm gonna keep telling myself that. And if I show one in a vlog or on my Instagram and my stories and I say, look at this new bag I got, you have every permission to message me and say, Cindy, you, Dirty, dirty birdie. Yeah, Annie Wilkes. Number five, and it's something I'm seeing more and more on, like at least it's showing up more and more in my YouTube recommendations. It's showing up more and more, like when I scroll through Instagram, like the top, whatever, is digital planners. Now, that does not include applications like Notion. I'm not even gonna talk about how really into Notion I am right now, how like, like deep down the Notion rabbit hole I am right now. I'm not gonna talk about that at the moment. If you wanna know about that, let me know in the comments below. I'm talking specifically about like digital bullet journals, digital planners, digital reading journals, where you load them into an application like GoodNotes on your iPad and you, you write in them like you would a planner, but it's digital and you can get digital stickers and all of that. I tried. I got a reading journal at the beginning of the year that I thought I would totally utilize on my iPad and I tried and I just, I can't. It was beautiful. The program works really well. I just, I don't, I don't dig on writing on my iPad like that. I love lettering on my iPad. I love drawing on my iPad. I love using my iPad in Google Sheets or in the aforementioned Notion, but there's something about scribbling notes on my iPad that really doesn't work for me. Now I'm getting a cover, a paper-like cover for my iPad because I want to try that to help not wear down the nibs of my pencils so quickly from how heavy handed I am and how often I use Procreate for work. Maybe that will make it easier for me. But as of right now, digital planning kind of gives me the heebie-jeebies. I don't like it. I said as much about reading ebooks and now I'm obsessed with my Kindle so that may change in the future but for spring 2021 which is this anti-haul I will not be purchasing any more digital planners one was enough all right this one is again another one of those that I just want to stick a pin in because I'm noticing it popping up some new releases from my favorite shops like Simply Gilded are happening right now and they're really beautiful and I'm not buying any more washi tape I'm not even going to go into it watch my washi tape declutter that was before I was moving. That was just when I redid my office. Watch my live washi tape declutter. I'll link it up above. I packed all of my washi except for I think six rolls that I kept just in case I needed them and I'm feeling okay with that right now. So I'm not buying any more. I might buy more in the future but not right now. Keep telling yourself that Cindy. So this final thing I'm going to talk about is a keen example 
of marketing really working its mojo on me, but also having crafty ass friends work counter mojo on me. And that is a cricket. If you don't know what a cricket is, and um, most of you watching this probably know more about it than I do, but in case you don't, a cricket is a cutting machine similar to a silhouette. It's like a die cutting machine, but that can cut like computer files and shit like that. And there's things it can do. Like if you want to get, make your own stickers, a cricket or a silhouette can cut your stickers for you. If you don't know what one is, I'm sure you've seen one because they have been putting some amount of fucking marketing money into the bigger stores because Michaels and Target, Target, like all these places I'm noticing when I walk into have giant cricket displays and all their shit everywhere. And it was beginning to work on me. I was like, maybe I need one because I kept seeing it. I kept seeing it. And I finally started thinking to myself, maybe I need one of those things. Maybe I could use one of those things. So many possibilities with one of those things. And then the cricket drama happened. I'm not gonna go deeply into it because I don't know a lot about it because I don't own one of them, but I know that it had something to do with them charging you basically to use your machine. You need to subscribe to their cloud-based whatever to use it, or you were limited to 20 of your own designs per month to use a machine you paid for already. That's fucking Garbo. The community got real pissed off real quick. They walked it back real fast after that but it left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths including mine as somebody who was considering buying one just because i was seeing it already so yeah i'm not buying it because of the drama but there's actually another reason i'm not buying it and it has to do with packing my garage up while i was packing my garage up recently to get ready for the move i came across my silhouette portrait which is another digital cutting machine my silhouette portrait is the i believe the first edition of the silhouette portrait when they came out with that smaller size from almost 10 years ago, more than 10, I don't remember. It was before I joined the planner community, before I had my first Aaron Condren, years and years and years and years ago. It has been covered with a dust cover since before we bought this house. It was covered with a dust cover for multiple years in the house that we rented before this house. I only used it for about a year to cut vinyl and to make ornaments for Christmas and whatever, and like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles situation for my friend at work, and that was about it, and then it never got used again. So why the fuck would I buy another cutting machine when I have had one for almost as long as one of my kids has been alive and it's been in the garage covered with a dust cover. Drama, no drama, that's that's not, Cindy, that's not necessary. That was the last of what I had on this list, but I wanna take a second here to remind you that my reasons for not buying these things may not be your reasons for not buying something, but you have reasons for and against spending money on something. What I would like to remind you is to not let the marketing get to you the way it almost did with the cricket. I hope you don't need drama to distract you from buying something just because you happen to see it a whole bunch in a store or online. I am trying to be that drama for you. I'm not drama, but pretend I'm your drama. Pretend I'm the one letting you know that when you really, really wanna buy something because you keep seeing it over and over again, to just take a step back and look at your purchase critically and decide, do I really need this or really want this? Or do I just think I want it because I keep seeing it over and over again and once you've seen something enough times, you might convince yourself that you're supposed to have it. It'll save you money and it'll save you the frustration of having to declutter everything in its mother should your husband get relocated when you were least expecting it and suddenly you have to move across states or just not have to fill your place up with a whole bunch of bullshit you don't need. I would love to hear from you in the comments below something you are not buying this planner season. Let me know. Let's encourage each other in our journey to be more critical with how we spend our money. Not a minimalist, just trying to be a little bit more conscious about the money that I spend. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, friends, stay safe because I love you, man. Peace out. Peace.